Hey guys, it's Maggie and I am back today. I'm here from the future to share some clips that I took on my first day being home post-op, first day being home from my ectopic pregnancy rupture. Um, the whole ordeal from going uh, through an IUI that resulted in an ectopic pregnancy to getting treated with methotrexate, the methotrexate working slash not working because obviously I ruptured and um, you know suddenly going into emergency surgery. It has taught me, I mean really reinforced that I need to be knowledgeable about my illness and I need to be knowledgeable about the medications for my illness. Um, and I also need to be able to advocate for myself even in really difficult, painful situations. It really became apparent to me that, um, you know, I'm healthy considering all the stuff I've gone through, but I have some chronic illness issues that complicate things. And a majority of the patients going to fertility clinics and becoming pregnant and going to OBGYNs and delivering, um, they might not have the issues that I have. Pregnancy is a healthy person problem. It is not, um, oftentimes, somebody like myself's sort of issue. <laughs> I mean, that's not to say that people like myself do not go on to have healthy pregnancies. We've talked about that a lot. Many people do. But somebody in my circumstance with Crohn's disease and living with a permanent ileostomy and a total proctocolectomy, they don't see it that often. Um, these doctors don't handle this. This issue is not their focus. Their issue is fertility or pregnancy. Um, so that really got drilled into my brain during this whole thing. I recently shared the first ER trip video. That was very frustrating. And editing that and watching it back, it was, it was just as frustrating as I think it was to many people watching. My fertility doctor, um, after two rounds of methotrexate, wanted to do a third round. Um, because my HCG levels were still fairly high, they really wanted to make sure that I didn't rupture. And they were monitoring me so closely. They were really the ones that were hoping for surgery. It was the hospital that kind of veered away from that. Um, I was hoping for surgery. I went in there after the first ER trip and I said, I wish they would have just done it. I, I, if this right fallopian tube is gonna be a problem, I wish it was just gone. I wish they just did it. All that being said, I don't like methotrexate. It is a rough drug. It's a serious drug with harsh side effects. Um, and I learned that it really did not make me feel good. It, it made me pretty sick feeling. But I was also worried about being immunocompromised on it because I'm already on a drug that does that. I'm on Humira. I have a lot of issues with sinus infections, which ironically, I have not had a sinus issue in a few months ever since starting this fertility stuff um, and then becoming pregnant, which makes me wonder. I don't know. But also issues with like UTIs. And then when I get colds and stuff, they just stick around forever. So I just didn't want to add to that because I knew, I don't know, I did have the inkling that I, I was going to wind up getting surgery anyway. And I just wanted to be in the best position, the least immunocompromised I could be if I was going to have incisions healing and stuff like that. So I brought this up to my fertility doctor and he said, you know, I wouldn't worry about the immunosuppression because that's not an issue with methotrexate. And as many of us know, it is. Like it does immunocompromise people. But I do want to clarify, I really love this doctor. I think he's fantastic and very knowledgeable about all things fertility. He has taught me so much. Um, it was just this thing. This is a medication that he is using for ectopic pregnancies. He's not using it for inflammatory bowel disease or other autoimmune conditions. And it was just, it was a really good reminder that not all medical professionals are perfect. Um, they're going to use their medications and their surgeries for their, um, you know, their focus. And they might not be aware of all of the other things going on. So I just wanted to clarify that this doctor has been monitoring me so closely and really was advocating for me a lot, communicating with the hospital a lot to make sure that they had all the information. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that there was no 
pushed for me to take the third dose of methotrexate in the appointment. He said, listen, immunocompromisation question, immunosuppression question aside, how does it make you feel? And I said, terrible. And he said, okay, we won't do it then. We're not going to do anything we don't want you, that you don't want to do. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that because I think he is fantastic. It was just this one thing that I was like, hold up, hold up, wait a second. <laughs> I know methotrexate. I don't know it in fertility perspective, but I do know it in the autoimmune world. So I'm glad that I had that knowledge and I hope that that really, um, you know, proves to you as, you know, maybe a patient watching, be knowledgeable about what's going on in your body and what medications you put into your body. I will show you the first clips being home um, in just a moment. The first actual night of being home, like the day that I got discharged and Zach drove me home, I don't remember honestly a whole lot. <laughs> um, I do remember we stopped at Wendy's on the way home and I got a Dave's single meal and they forgot my burger, which I discovered at home. So I was very upset about that. I mean, I was like almost in tears. The hormone fluctuations and just the whole ordeal has made me cry a lot. Like I couldn't wear mascara for a while because I just kept crying it off. Um, but yes, I was very upset about not having the burger. <laughs> and the other thing that I remember is how absolutely weak I was. I, I didn't realize how weak I was until we got home and I was moving around the house trying to do regular people things like open up a pill bottle and I couldn't do that. Um, I couldn't shower by myself. Zach actually got in the shower with me that night and just washed me, washed my hair, washed my body. I couldn't do it. He, um, he wound up opening all the pill bottles for me. He brought a stepladder upstairs for me to put beside our bed because I couldn't quite climb into bed. And, um, you know, he helped me get little containers, little easier containers to open um, to put my pain medication in that I could put right beside the bed already dosed out So if I were to wake up in the middle of the night in pain, I could easily take them and that brings me to Another point where I had to advocate for myself a little bit um, And you'll see in just a moment. I am quite upset in these clips. I'm about to show you Just note I had just woken up. I was in a lot of pain because I had never been home this early after surgery. This is the fastest I've ever been discharged. And, you know, taking oral medication regularly. Um, and something I didn't know was, basically, I knew I was being sent home with pain medication. I did not realize how little until we went to the pharmacy to pick it up. I was not given very much pain medication for somebody on day one post-op and I was terrified because it was Friday and I didn't want to go through the weekend in the amount of pain that I was having this morning. So commence a very, very upset and whiny Maggie. Good morning, guys. I think it's really important to show this. Um, I am in a lot of pain and not pain that something's wrong, post-op pain because I was cut open and I didn't know. In the hospital, I was only there. I had the surgery, I think around 8 p.m. and I was discharged the next day by two or 2.30. And they were giving me five milligrams of oxy every four hours, which I was more like every five, maybe a little bit more than that which is a low amount. And after my colectomy, which I know is a lot more involved and probably a lot more painful, they gave me, I think, 25 bills of 10 milligram oxy. And that, along with Tylenol, I was able to get home. Mind you, I was in the hospital for three days this time I'm in the hospital less than 24 hours. And so I was doing well yesterday morning, oxy, Tylenol, and ibuprofen, which I'm not really supposed to take, and it's already bugging my stomach. And I don't think it's doing anything. 
I am in pain. They gave me eight pills of five milligrams. That's like a day and a half's worth. This Today is post-op day two. Normally I would still be in the hospital after surgery. So this is a large incision. I'm in pain. So I just took one and a half oxy because I don't know what else to do and I'm gonna have to call him and I can't find my discharge paperwork and Zach's not awake yet and I don't wanna bug him. But I shouldn't be fearful the morning after getting home and I'm gonna run out of pain medication. Ooh. I think I deal with pain pretty well and I know that this is significant enough if I'm crying. I'm not trying to get rid of all pain. I know that that is not reasonable. I'm trying to be comfortable so I can walk without crying. Oh my God. I have never seen such a low dose or amount given. We gave more in pediatrics for less things and we were always very careful with children. I don't know how women who have C-sections actually have a baby do this because this hurts. I don't even want to look at the incision. I can feel a pulling on one side. And it's right where my pants sit. I'm supposed to take it off this morning. I'm just waiting for the little bit of oxy to do something. I just feel the need to share this. This is what not prescribing adequately looks like. <sighs> okay, I am calming down a bit. A, because I took one and a half pills of Oxy, which got me to a comfortable level where I can walk around the house now without sobbing. But I kind of lost it because I was able to get into the my chart for this hospital system. I have never been to this hospital except for like last week and and then this week with my surgery. Um, so I didn't have my chart access. I had gotten a text and I was already worried last night about not having enough pain medication for the weekend. So I clicked on my text link to get into it. It didn't ask me. Sorry, it didn't ask me to make a password or a username or anything, and I didn't even think of it because, I don't know, just got home from the hospital. My brain's not working the best right now. And so I thought, okay, good, I have access. I'll be able to message the doctor should I need to. So I went to do that this morning, and it signed me out, and I'm like, well, I don't know my username or password, so I clicked forgot username. It's supposed to send you an email. I tried it three times. It didn't. Um, and then I got my discharge paperwork, and I saw there was a code to get your account set up try the code it said it's invalid so that was frustrating so then i looked through my paperwork again and i found um i found the phone number for the doctor i'll be seeing in a couple weeks for my post-op follow-up so i called the office was on hold for 15 minutes just it didn't say that i was like in line waiting it just was playing music so i hung up tried calling again the phone started to ring and I thought somebody's gonna answer they immediately hung up so I started crying <gasps> and then I called again and finally somebody answered so I'm crying on the phone I'm like listen I just had surgery and there is not enough pain medication to get me through the weekend and it hurts I'm in pain and I think she could tell by my voice because I was sounding just like this and I'm like I'm really sorry I'm just upset right now and she was like no no you're fine like I'm gonna send an urgent message to your doctor um, to see if we can get something for you um, so she said to expect a call later today so I'm waiting for that call now and then I also emailed the helpline um, for the, the my chart access so hopefully I'm sorry, eight pills is not enough, and five milligrams is not enough. They gave me 10 milligrams for other surgeries when I weighed like 12 pounds less. So, different hospital system. I am realizing that my hospital system that I usually go to is a lot more, seems like reasonable. Um, and I, I don't need much, but I just want enough to make sure that I can get through the weekend and be comfortable and not miserable. 
I am okay with pain. I can handle pain. But there's there's a lot more going on than just the incision. It's the feeling of the gas pain that they inflate you with. You're very uncomfortable from that. The best thing I can do to get that out is to walk. I can't walk if I'm in incisional pain. Also, the back of my throat. I don't know if they had trouble intubating me, but my throat hurts a lot. It did not hurt yesterday morning. It started um, a couple hours after we got home. And so this morning, I took a flashlight to look at the back of my throat. Blood. It's just blood back there. And I'm going to guess they had they nicked something when they were trying to intubate me. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, and usually, I do have a sore throat after surgery. That's not uncommon because I know what they do. Uh, I just, I didn't feel it yesterday morning when I was getting ready to be discharged because I had just had surgery 12 hours before. I'm sure some of the drugs were still in my system. Some of the anesthesia was still in my system making things a bit more comfortable. And now I'm just uncomfortable. Huh. I feel, I feel better now though because I took a pill and a half, which I'm not supposed to do. But I'm not going to sit here and just be absolutely miserable crying because I'm hurting. I think that's stupid. I think that's stupid. I understand there are many issues with pain medications and people abuse them. I am not one of them. I had legitimate surgery. I just got cut open. I have always been very responsible with these medications because um, I know I have family history of severe addiction. You guys know that's how I lost my mom. I am super careful. <laughs> um, I don't want to ever have to be down that road. But I also recognize when there are uses for things like this, appropriate uses, and this is one of them. This is one of them. I should be comfortable. I want to be able to get around the house, move comfortably, get some steps in to heal faster. I'm not going to be able to do that if I'm sobbing sitting here just still as can be so I don't want to move anything and get hurt. I don't remember. I don't well, I I vlogged all my other surgeries basically and I don't remember ever feeling like this getting home. <laughs> so uh, I did not know how sad this would make me and at least I have absolutely confirmed in my mind that I want to be a parent. Um, that absolutely was confirmed through all of this. <sighs> I just didn't know how sad I would be to lose something that was only there for a couple weeks. <laughs> um, and then the physical. Sorry, just got a call. Um, I think it was a nurse, so they're going to talk to the doctor. And I was like, I just feel like... I'm just concerned I won't make it through the weekend. I feel really bad I don't post being this upset online this often. Um, but I, I didn't want to not show it because... The hardest thing for me is um, going through any of this stuff is not being mentally prepared for what's to come and not really knowing what to expect. And I don't ever want to scare anybody for, you know, these different battles. But I know for myself, it's just the best thing I've done is um, look at other people's experiences and kind of prepare my mind for all of the different possibilities. So I want to be honest about this experience and just, it's, this is one of the hardest times I have been through. I didn't expect that. You know, a month and a half ago, I was so excited and giddy for my first IUI, never expecting to actually get pregnant, have an ectopic, have it rupture, get emergency surgery, and now not have pain adequately managed. <laughs> um, wow. I do have positive stuff I want to talk to you about. Um, I had a really wonderful conversation with an OBGYN. Fantastic guy. And I want to tell you that positive conversation, but obviously I don't want to be like this. I mean, my eyes, look at these. I've cried so much over the last couple of days. I was sobbing 
going to the OR because it happened so fast. They came in the room and they're like, we, we gotta go. We gotta go. And I had like a minute or 30 seconds to say goodbye to Zach. And I just lost it. I just absolutely lost it. There was also, I, I can't remember what I told you yesterday because this has really been a lot. They had concerns that there would be bowel damage, like small intestine damage, um, and that they might have to resect more intestine. They might have to move my stoma, reform it. And when they told me that, I mean, they were telling me all the potential possibilities, but when they told me that, I was like, please try not to because this stoma, I've been very fortunate with it. It has worked for 14 plus years. I've never had issues with retraction or prolapsing. It has been a perfect inch long stoma in the perfect location for me. I'm used to it. Um, please don't lose it. And thankfully, that was part of my conversation with this OBGYN is when they got in there and they did the C-section incision, um, they were shocked because there were no adhesions everything was clear as could be down there so they were able to do the surgery very straightforward thank god um but i was so afraid of what i was gonna come out with i was so afraid if i was gonna come out because i didn't know how much blood i had lost and um i was so sad because it was like this final ending to this thing that I wanted and it was just so fast I went from feeling okay that morning to like needing emergency surgery and I've never gone downhill so fast this is gonna be a long video I'm sorry is that an earthquake are we having an earthquake right now I think we're having an earthquake. I'm not kidding. I don't know if my microphone picked up on it. The whole house just shook. And I was like, is that a plane or a truck driving by? But it lasted too long for that. I think we just had an earthquake. Well, I gotta Google it, now, um, unless unless the oxy's just making me crazy. That's wild. So I'm in the, I'm just vlogging. I'm in the bathroom now. See, I'm a lot more comfortable. I'm able to move around. That's That's awesome. <clears throat> we, that was an earthquake. <laughs> it's confirmed. And Zach did feel it. He was in bed, but. I thought our natter started scratching vigorously. I thought you turned the vibrate on our bed. I was like, wow, that's a lot stronger than I remember it being. Um. That was weird. Well, I caught it on camera. I don't know if you heard it or I don't think you could see any shaking, but I need to wash my hands because I'm going to remove the dressing. They said to do it this morning. And I also have, oh God, I look so pale. I'm waiting for a call from the hospital um, to, you know, see if they'll give me any more pain medication. I think I have four and a half pills left. I've used three. Hold on. Does that make sense? They gave me eight. I took one last night. One in the middle of the night, like around 3 a.m. And then I took one around, one and a half, around nine. Yeah, so I used three and a half up. And I just, I'm two days post-op right now. How am I gonna do this? I don't have a ponytail holder. Well, at least I can move around right now. Good lord. Alright, you're gonna see my bikini line, because that's where they do these incisions. Oh, crap, I dropped it. Yeah. Oh. And let me clip Leroy out of the way. He's 
little hair clippy. There we go. Perfect. All right. See, it is fairly low. I don't want to flash you guys. I'm going to use a little adhesive remover spray. take the steri strips off by accident so just use a teeny teeny amount I also have to be careful I'm gonna keep it dressed so I do have more gauze here um, because I have an ostomy and that can be an infection risk oh it's all numb <sighs> it's totally numb there that sucks Maybe that won't last, I don't know. I might have to blur some of this. felt something pull. There's a little blood. I felt that this morning. I'm going to blur because here, let me pull my pants up as high as I can. So there is the incision. It's definitely a bit longer than my other one. Do you want to see it? I'll come over. I'll Okay. You can't see the incision. There's stary strips on it, but it's, it's, I don't know, six, yeah, six inches long. Doesn't I felt I pulled that this morning when I got out of bed and I could feel it. It looks like, could packed at least. Yeah, it's like I think it'll it's heal a well. Scar. It's a C section. People are gonna be like, let's get it. Always that earthquake. I know. This is in New York. Oh, sorry, New York and Philly. Let's do a nice small amount of gauze. Keep it breathable, but still a little bit protected. That was weird. Just the destruction of uh, what it looks like in New York right now. Oh man, a whole chair fell over. <laughs> what was the rating of this earthquake? 4.8. That's I'm shocked. 4.8? Still small, but bigger. That is my second earthquake. The first earthquake I ever felt was in New Jersey. I think I was about to go to college. Yeah, it was high school because I was driving. Yeah, but it was like the summer before. Yep. I remember I was about to leave for Salisbury because um, my friend was visiting and when she arrived I was like oh my god did you feel that earthquake she was like what she actually just texted me no. uh, Jess about the earthquake? no no she was checking in wow. at least I feel more comfortable now and I was in an earthquake. What is going on with the world? It's a, there is a fault here. It's just not super active. People forget. And my dad, when I called him to update him on everything going on, he said I knew something was off because I slipped on a banana peel. Who slips on a banana peel? Nobody, but apparently he did. And he said that ever since he did that, walking into work, he was like, I knew something was wrong. Something was off with the world. So that was essentially all of my first day after being home from the hospital um, after getting the surgery. There was not a whole lot after that because I found that being in bed was the most comfortable place that I was. I mean, I just seemed like it um, cradled me the best. We have one of those beds that raises. You can raise the feet and stuff. So I made the bed move up a little bit so I could sit um, sort of sit, lie down without feeling like I was sliding in the bed. I just felt the most comfortable there. I also discovered that I couldn't lie on my sides at all because it felt like it was pulling my incision. The only place I was comfortable was on my back, which when you lay on your back all night long without turning, I don't know, I have to turn usually and 
That was a struggle. Um, it was, I don't know, it was rough. And I'm glad that I'm further out now, obviously doing a lot better. It's those first initial days that you just feel like, oh my gosh, is, is it gonna get better? And it does, it always does. It's just, it's important to remember that. Um, every day you get a little bit better, a little bit less pain, a little bit more movement, and you start getting back to your regular routine. It just takes time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Oh, I wanted to say, one of my friends from high school, Lexi, she sent me these ranaculous, I think that's how you say it. She sent me this beautiful set of flowers. Um, basically, everybody who has sent something, I have, just wanna let you know I cried because that's, that's all I've been doing for the last two to three weeks. <laughs> it was very sweet of her, so I wanted to put it in a video and capture it. Um, so thank you for that. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me on this journey. Um, there's still a bit of healing to do and you'll see that coming up. But thanks for watching today. I will see you guys very soon. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you are looking for a way to help support my channel, consider liking this video or even subscribing. You can also check out my store at letstalkivd.shop. I have stickers and hoodies like these guys over here just related to chronic illness and inflammatory bowel disease, something fun. And I also have a coupon code for my YouTube watchers. You could also become a member of my channel like the wonderful people scrolling on screen here. They've become a member and they have access to videos a little bit earlier. It's a great way to support my channel and really just watching my videos means the world. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next.